Have you seen how a typical conversation starts um, when you're traveling and you meet someone else in a hostel or a traveling agency or whatever? What are the first typical com conversation between two travelers? What is your name? How long have you been traveling for? And where are you from? Hi, my name is Manuel. I'm not traveling at the moment. And I am from Guatemala. Guatemala. What a great way to spice up the conversation, hey? People ask me, Guate what? Guantanamo? Guadalajara? Is that a part of Mexico? Or even worse, I had an Aussie girl that said to me in Sydney, Oh, Guatemala. I always wanted to go to Machu Picchu. When I was traveling, I was so certain no one will ever guess my country right, that I started a little game. People ask me, where are you from? And I said, you, ask, you can ask me any kind of question, I'll answer yes and no. And if you guess my country right, I'll buy you a beer. No one, no one ever guessed Guatemala. Until finally a guy did guess it right, and I had to buy, buy him a $7 beer when I was already running out of money. All jokes aside, Early on, I realized my country has a terrible marketing problem. The vast majority of people have no idea what Guatemala is. And the ones who do know something will quickly refer to the bad things they hear in the news. Drug trade, violence, poverty. I've lived in this country all my life. And I know that Guatemala is way more than that. It's way better. Also, and probably it happens to you too, I've heard people saying, this country has so much potential. This country has so much to offer. But for some reason, that never happened. After I finished my travels, I came back to Guatemala, and I started here in Guatemala City, my, my hostel. And it's been an amazing experience. We've hosted people from all over the world, thousands of travelers. There's many anecdotes I could share with you. And also many things I've noticed. When people arrive to Guatemala, they're usually a bit worried. Is it going to be safe? Um, it's, you just have to read uh, the webpage of any embassy, and you'll be a bit freaked out about traveling in this country. Three weeks later, their story is completely different. People are in love with this country. They have the most amazing experiences. And see, I've had people literally crying on the way to the airport because they love it so much. For those of you here, here out there who have no idea of what Guatemala is, let me tell you a bit about it. We're a small country in Central America, roughly the size of the American state of Louisiana, twice the size of Tasmania. 14 million people live here in Guatemala, 1 million live in the US. We have a GDP um, per capita of around $5,000 a year. And we have a lot of great things to offer to the world. Guatemala produces the best coffee in the world. We also produce the best rum in the world. We have, within our country, the most beautiful lake in the world. A, a colonial city that's one of the most beautiful colonial cities in the Americas. Mayan cities all across the north. 23 spoken languages. So, access to two oceans as well. So with so much na nature, culture, and heritage, why is Guatemala such a big secret? Was there a way to tell a different story? Have you ever wondered why we, as a country, have never been able to brand ourselves? To me, the key to this terrible problem lies in the fact that we are a divided country. We are more likely to see our differences than our similarities. People always see, some people are richer, some people are worse off, some people are Mayan descent, European descent. And even in religion, you see that we're generally a Christian country, but a lot of people are Catholic, some are evangelical, and those differences seem to play a, a more important role than our great common denominator, Guatemala. So, where do we start? 
it's a country branding is a very serious topic. I mean, um, when I started researching this stuff, you have to include variables like immigration, governance, the economy, the peoples, the heritage, and I'm just a hostel owner. But this is where social social media comes by. You can send a message to thousands of people if the message is appealing. So I started with something like this. I posted this picture. And I said a message like, governments shut down, nature doesn't. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. <laughs> this is Lake Atitlan. Um, it's a, over a, a hundred square miles of water, 1,500 meters above sea level, with three massive volcanoes in the southern side. It's almost impossible to describe. So I'll tell you what Aldous Huxley said about Lake Atitlan late in the 1800s. He was comparing it to Lake Cuomo in Italy. And he said, Lake Cuomo, it seems to me, touches the permissibly picturesque. But Atitlan is like Cuomo, with severe embellishments of immense volcanoes. It is too much of a good thing. I wanted to talk to the people in London, the people stuck in routine, stuck in an office cubicle under that beautiful London weather. I wanted to say, hey, this is how the sun rose on the lake today. Wouldn't you rather be here? Wouldn't this make you forget his boss, your boss and his deadlines? Because to me, this is what Guatemala is all about. It's like taking a trip to the past to the origin, to the earth. I wanted to talk to the New York businessman, the man wearing a suit and tie every day. So I posted a picture like this, and I said, underneath your corporate outlook, your, son, your soul needs to run wild. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. I love this picture very much because this guy, Seems to be seems to have a day job like a, an accountant or something, and yet he's traveling at full speed, completely drunk. <laughs> I wanted to talk to the people in Los Angeles, Detroit, Chicago, or any industrial city in North America. I wanted to say, hey, there's this Eden-like place called Guatemala, a place so much different from the place you live. This is Samuk Champagne National Park, seven hours north of Guatemala City. And for me, the best way to describe it is when tourists ask me, what is Samuk Champagne? It's like Avatar without the blue creatures trying to kill you. <laughs> it is really amazing. I wanted to talk to the people in Dubai and Doha and all these new cities growing up in the world quickly. I wanted to say, hey, this is the grandmother of all cities, Antigua Guatemala. It's been sitting there for 500 years. I want to give hope to the thousands of people that stumble upon this page with fresh pictures of an unknown country. Now, why did I chose the phrase, perhaps? In this day and age, everyone seems to be selling you something. I, wanna, I wanted this to sound more like a suggestion. Like something a, hus a wife would say to a husband, hey, perhaps you need to take a break. Perhaps you need this, perhaps you need a little Guatemala. Another thing, need a little, to me sounds like a, like a magic potion. Have you seen the, how everything is going to, towards tribal clothing, organic food? That is what Guatemala is all about. Another important thing for me was to break that terrible idea of dependency. Being one of the worst, of the, one of the poorest countries of Latin America, we tend, it seems to me, to attract uh, the kind of person, what they call now the voluntarist. People with, people with good hearts and with good intentions. But however, they come to Guatemala with that attitude of, we are helping them. I call them the white savior. Now, don't get me wrong. I think a lot of these people do great work. Um, 
But also, I believe that if we are ever going to get out of poverty, it is us who need to do the job. That's why perhaps you need a little Guatemala and not the other way around. So let me take you on a trip through my country with some of the pictures that we posted. Above and beyond, perhaps you need a little Guatemala. This is sunrise over the Tajumulco volcano, 4,200 meters above sea level. As you see, you're literally on top of the clouds. Some of the people that have seen this page tell me, I didn't even know that Guatemala was, could have so high terrain. Your dinner comes frozen, your veggies from a can. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. This is a scene in any, that could be in any market throughout Guatemala. Fresh products come straight from the farmer to the consumer. Embrace love. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. An important thing um, to our country, I think, is the people. People have always said, you know, the most incredible thing of Guatemala is its children. I believe it's true. You spend your best years climbing up the corporate ladder. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. Another message for all those overachievers out there. Could this be Jim Morrison's other side? Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. This is a starry night in Tikal. It is important that, um, to know that we have many cities. This is Tikal, a city of around the year 750 BC. And, but recently they found the city of El Mirador, 300 years before Christ. It is over a thousand years of civilization history in the northern territory of Petén. Quit smoking. Perhaps in Italy, Guatemala. In our country, we have 23 volcanoes. Three of them are active. This is a show that you rarely see in other countries around the world. Before jumping off your skyscraper window, jump up here. This is like a divan again, and it's a very popular site where people jump. I want to say, hey, this is Friday, let go. In our country, even the earth wants to reach for the sky. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. Hello, summertime. When I was sleeping, I could hear a voice at night that said to me, perhaps you need a little Guatemala. In our country, transformers turn to chicken buses. <laughs> By the way, let me, let me introduce you to Optimus Prime. Um, these are the, the rural buses that travel through our Guatemala. Some of them are very colorful, and they crumb the crap out of them. And uh, yeah, it's one of the most amazing things to see. Heaven, perhaps in your little Guatemala. How about this one? Your, your friends message you once a year, and the message ha says, Happy B Day. That is all the interaction you have with them. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. This actually happens to me a lot. <laughs> Some people just send you one message a year. I want to say, hey, these are real human interactions. It's, again, trying to fight against the tendency of today's life. Putting your left hand in, putting your left hand out, and shaking it all about had never been so freaking awesome. <laughs> Above the sky, perhaps you need a little Guatemala. These are clouds, by the way. Hungry? Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. Have you noticed that not a lot of people know anything about our food? This is another important thing that we need to promote in our country brand.
Tahiti? Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. The place where you live looks like the background of the Flintstones. <laughs> Repetitive, lacking magic. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. The color is literally everywhere in our country, even in our clothes. This is the Mayan Wipi. Now, for Mayan women, it takes up to 10 months to produce something like this. And in them, they express their happiness, their sorrow, and their way of life. There used to be a time where dressing like this was subject to being considered a lesser human being. Part of it because we're still living in a machista culture, but also because of the colonial views that, in which Guatemala is founded. This is changing very fast. So another, thing, another one of the things that we've been promoting through this project is the Mayan women. Today, Mayan women are making their way up the, the fashion scene, and now they're being used from anywhere from boots to shoes, to bags. Now, for me, the message was very important. I don't, I don't come here to say, hey, everything is perfect about Guatemala. We live in such a beautiful country. I realize there's a lot of challenges that we have to face. Challenges like poverty or lack of education. But again, to me, in this project, it was very important to notice that it is us who need to make the solutions. In rural parts of Guatemala, some children have, have it very hard to study. They go to school in the morning, then they finish and they have to go to work with their parents in the field. And then when they come back home, there's no electricity. So one of the projects we've been promoting through this page is Quetzol. These guys made um, with solar panels. Solar panels that are able to create electricity for the household. And now it's cheaper than the, what they used to use before, which was candles. So, Guatemala has also solutions for the for third world countries. If, you, if you're a country that's struggling with its education system, perhaps you need a little Guatemala as well. <sighs> I am not naive. I realize we still have a long way to create our own brand. Well, with small projects like this, the people are empowered to tell the world about their country. Now we have pictures and videos that have been donated to us, and it's been great to tell the world this story. So let me finish with this line. I come from a land usually referred to as the land of eternal spring. And in this day and age, when no one really knows what the future might bring, I invite anyone who hears this message to stop for a while and ask, in order to change, to face the challenges of the future, should we also take a look into our past? This strip of land in the middle of the Americas, the Mayan chose to call their home. Even before there was New York, Paris, London, or Rome might hide the answers to many of the challenges we face today. As it brings us close to what we are, the purpose of our journey and our way. So if inside your head you hear a voice whispering, a need for something different, a strange call to basics, and if this voice becomes louder and it begins to holler, the message is clear. You're not becoming crazy. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. Thank you very much.